Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today we're going to be creating an Easter scene in this egg-shaped glass dome that I picked up at Target in the one, three, and five dollar section. I don't know if they're still, still available. And we're gonna use Tim Holtz Ideology salvaged rabbits and tiny eggs to create our scene. And I'm gonna show you a technique for turning those salvaged rabbits into fuzzy bunnies using yarn and a flea comb. Let's get crafting. So we are gonna start with our bunnies. These are Tim Holtz Ideology salvaged rabbits. Um, and they're kind of an off-white, so I'm planning on painting one of them Snow White because I'm going to be using a technique to add fur to them that I'm going to show you. And since one of them I'm going to use white on, I want to have a base just in case it shows through that is completely white. And then for the other bunny, I'm going to paint him using... Uh, folk art dove gray acrylic paint and this was deco art snow titanium white use whatever paints you have it does not matter so i'm gonna use some simon says simon says stamp say that five times fast red line tape this is a tip from tim holtz to attach the bunnies to um, a little craft stick to make it a little easier to maneuver them while I'm painting. Um, and I will just warn you, it, it took me a good long time to get this tape out of the packaging because it's super sticky on the sides. So just be aware of that if you pick up any of, pick up red line tape. I know Tim Holtz recommended it because it's heat stable so that if you're using foundry wax to cover any of the salvaged critters that is that are in the ideology line that you can attach them to a craft stick and not have to worry about when you heat them them falling off so i'm just gonna stick the bunny on see and now i can turn it around and hopefully not get my fingers covered in paint Really, this is just meant to be a base coat because I am going to cover them with a technique with yarn to give them the look of having fur. So I'm going to, like I said, one of them is going to get painted completely white. The other one is going to be gray, although I think I'll probably paint the tail and the inside of the ears white as a better base choice for those because those will be white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these suckers and then come back when they are all painted and dry and show you how to add fur to them. So my white bunny is dry. The gray one's still drying um, and is off to the side, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna turn some white yarn into fur for our white bunny. And the trick here is a flea comb. Now I've not used these on this on my dogs, so it's a perfectly clean new flea comb. Um, and I don't remember where I saw this idea, uh, so I would I would tell you, but I I honestly don't remember. I used it on a project a few years back, a mixed media project where I made a squirrel and I gave him gray fur. Um, but all you all you need to do is take some yarn and brush it. And it's going to turn the yarn and make it look like fur. And then you take your piece that you're gluing it to. And I'm going to use a little art glitter glue for this. And I'm just going to go down at the bottom and put glue if my glue will come out. All right, let's try that again. All right, just put a little bit of glue where you're going to put the fur and tap it down and 
then trim it with scissors that I don't think have handy. Hold on one sec. So see, we have added fur to the bottom of him and pretty much you just keep combing and applying the fur. And actually I think it's easier if I snip it off first and apply it using my tweezers. So what we're gonna do is comb some fur, grab it with the tweezers. Yeah, I have not done this since the last time I did it, which was a project um, three, four years ago. And you just add a little bit of glue attach the fur and we're going to give it a haircut after it's fully covered um, to trim it off and get it all nice and neat so he looks like a nice little furry bunny. And so I'm just going to keep brushing and attaching to the bunny until he is fully covered. So this is a uh, Sizzix hot glue tool. So it's a silicone tool to keep you from burning your fingers when working with hot glue. And I'm just gonna use it because hopefully that will mean the fur will stop sticking to my fingers. And another tip I'm going to point out is it's a little bit easier if you are wearing, you know, pants to brush the yarn against your leg instead of on the table. It, it works a little bit better against, I don't know, the softer surface, I guess. So I'm actually gonna fit, switch to fabric tack because I found art glitter glue will work with fibers, but it takes longer to dry than it does with like paper. And the fabric tack grips a little bit faster when you're working with fibers. So we're gonna go see how fabric tack works. Cause I don't remember what glue I used. And I know it was neither fabric tack nor art glitter glue because back when I was doing this I didn't use either of those glues but I don't remember which one I did use. So I've got most of the fur on the bunny and it's looking very very woolly and it's really soft. Um, but I wanted to stop and point out when you get up to the face, do not put fur over the eye. So I'm going to be very careful to put glue it around and above, but not where the eye is because after we're done, we'll, we'll paint the eye. So it has a you know, cute bunny eye. He's going to get a haircut. Don't worry so that you can see the details again. Cause yeah, it, it's kind of like, he's a little woolly mammoth right now. Um, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do around the eye so you can see how I do that. And we put a little bit of glue underneath. Take my bit of brushed yarn. And... Here's the fun part, trying to do it, see what I'm doing, and make sure I stay on screen. And then just that. Tap it down into the glue. There you go. So you can see it's glued under the eye, which is not on camera. There we go. A little bit of glue there. Okay. 
and just lay it down in the glue, tap it in, and he's going to get a haircut, so don't worry about the fact that it now looks like the eye's covered, but I'm not actually gluing anything to the eye. I've also started on the gray bunny, and I realized I didn't point out when attaching our, our brushed out yarn, it's easiest to start from the bottom and go up because then you've got the hair kind of going like it would on an animal, like in the right direction. And it's always easier to layer on top than if you go from the bottom down, you're tucking up underneath, which makes it more difficult. So again, brush out your yarn until you get it nice and fluffy. Add a little bit of glue right above where you just glued. Snip off a piece, which I usually wrap it over the top of my finger like that so that I have a nice clean spot to snip and then it fluffs out and lay it down. And I've been using this tool to help out with sticking it down. Now another thing, I did not put any hair on the tail, and I'll show you on this guy. Like I didn't glue any onto the tail, because after I give it a haircut, I'm gonna give it like a fluffy cotton ball-y kind of tail. So we're gonna do that after we give this guy a haircut once he's fully covered. Um, so again, just keep going around till you cover it completely with the fur. And I'm going to do that off screen because, well, quite frankly, do you need to sit and watch me brush it out? Um, another thing, you will get extra fluff. This doesn't glue down as neatly for hair cutting, but for doing like the cotton ball tail, I saved the white so that I can make like a fluffy ball. The first time I did this technique, I was doing a squirrel, so I saved all the really like loose fluffy stuff to do the bushy tail. Um, so that's what the, the scraps are good for. Otherwise you can just uh, throw those out afterwards. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish covering both of the bunnies and then show you how to give him a haircut. Now the ears were a little fiddly. I already did them on the gray bunny who's just a big fluff of gray right now. Um, so he's gonna get a haircut in a minute. But for them, instead of going from the bottom up, I started from the top down, but still layering on top of each other. And I found using my little silicone thing to apply the glue helped me get it a little cleaner on there for the smaller spots. So I added a little glue. And this, when I brushed the um, yarn out, you'll notice it will s separate out um, into sections. Let me finish applying that. Because um, this is, you know, this has got three strands, so you can separate out the strands so you can have a slightly thinner piece to add on. Normally for down here, I just do the entire section. Um, but for the ears, I found it a little easier to do the single ply of the yarn. So again, I'm just going to add a little glue to this. You could probably use a toothpick um, or anything else you have to help get the glue into a nice spot, small spot. Because the hole on my fabric sack is rather large, so a big Wob of glue will come out if I pour directly on. And so as you see, I've got the hair tufted up in his ear. And I'm going to do the same thing for the, the rest of the sides of the ear because it's just easier to apply it that way and make sure you get the ear fully covered than um, going from here up to go from here down.
once we give him a haircut, we can always go back in and fill any empty spots that didn't get enough yarn. Okay, so we've got a woolly mammoth of a bunny. Well, two woolly mammoth of bunnies. <laughs> now comes the part to make them actually look like rabbits again, um, instead of these big fluffy balls of brushed yarn. What we're gonna do is start gently trimming away the excess to get it back into shape again. And I'm saving the fluff to the side that I'm trimming off because it might be useful for filling in any holes. Because once you give it a haircut, you'll be able to see where it might need some more. Like that spot looks like it got missed. would help if I was on screen to show you what I'm doing instead of being off screen. And for the gray bunny, I did a white belly on him. glue on that spot because those pieces are coming up and there are definitely a few spots that I will probably patch once I finish giving him his haircut. All right, I'm gonna take this off camera, take a closer look, figure out what else needs to be trimmed up. Cause I think his face may need a little bit more trimming and a little bit more fluff added in some spots. So I'm gonna take a closer look at that is. So I'm gonna clean him up a little bit more where I can better see what I'm doing. So I have gone ahead and finished giving the bunnies their haircuts. Um, There's definitely a bunch of spots that needed to be patched on the white one, probably because I did it while sitting on the couch watching TV the other night with not enough light. So I don't know that I would recommend doing a fully white rabbit. I think the, the gray looks better overall because, I don't know, the white looks a little grungy, probably from dirty fingers and glue. But now what I'm going to do, because there's still some spots on the face that are probably going to need some patching, especially on the gray one, um, is paint on the eyes so that those are done. I'm going to go with a very fine tip paintbrush because the eyes are very small um, and then once the eyeballs are painted on I can go back and fill in more fur around them the 
there. I mean, he looks so much better just having done that. Definitely did not cooperate. Still not too, too bad. Oh, and that was Americana Lamp Ebony Black Acrylic Paint. Pretty much use whatever paint you have. That's what I did. I just grabbed black paint. Now, I do also want to add some details on the face, around the nose, and the mouth. I am going to try using a little bit of pink. So I just grabbed pink blush. This is outdoor indoor gloss acrylic enamel paint. Pretty much because it was the pink I saw handy and grabbed it. Pretty much peeled away any fur for around where the little nose indent is on these guys. I'm just going to add a little pink. Then we're going to go back and fill in. And I am going to fill that in after the paint dries. And I'll just add some more fur over that, which should help dull it down a little bit so it's not like this bright pink on there. So I went ahead and touched up the fur around the eyes and ended up covering up where I had tried to paint on the nose because that just was not working. Um, so you get a little bit of pink still showing on the white one. But what I am gonna do is take a little bit of chalk and a Q-tip to add a little bit of pink in the ears. And now all we have to do is add the fluff for the tails. And I think I'm gonna take them off the sticks for that because that'll make it a little bit easier. And then trim off some of the overhang. So there's one bunny. Uh-oh, that stick broke. See if I can get it off. There we go. And then just clean up so that he should stand nicely. Two bunnies. And I've got a bunch of the fluff cleaned out of the comb that I'm just going to glue on as a big old poof on their tails. So there we go, those are our bunnies. They are all done. I'm gonna set them aside. Again, I may trim and touch up the tails, but we can start working on the rest of the elements that are gonna go in our little Easter egg dome. So in addition to the salvaged rabbits, I also got the Tim Holtz Ideology Tiny Eggs. And if you watched the Ideology release, uh, Tim Holtz covered the Easter eggs with rock candy glitter colored with alcohol. Egg. So I have already gone ahead and taken some rock candy glitter and colored it with alcohol ink so that I have a bunch of pretty Eastery colors. And give me a second and I will tell you which colors I use. This guy is Cool per Perry. That guy's Aqua. I used Shell Pink for the pink. Some Citrus for some green. And some Lemonade for the yellow. I would have done orange, but none of the orange alcohol inks I had were light enough that I thought would work. So I'm gonna take some eggs now and color them. Okay, so I got tiny eggs, got glitter. 
I don't want to get adhesive on my nice little containers, so I'm going to grab a little disposable cup to roll these around in. Dump the glitter in. Now, I'm pretty sure Tim Holtz usually uses the multimedia mat um, for this. I'm going to give my art glitter glue a try because that's why it's called art glitter glue because it's supposed to work for glitter. So we're going to see, but it dries really fast, so I don't know how well this is going to work. And pretty much just going to cover the egg with a little glue, roll my fingers around in it. And then toss it in the glitter. And roll it around. Okay, I think it may dry too. Back as not fully covered. So we're going to add some more glue. This time I'll use the matte medium since that should give me a little more drying time. Bounce that sucker right out. And it's mostly covered. It's got a bare spot, a couple bare spots. I'll add a little more. And there we go. We got a little glitter covered Easter egg. So the matte medium was not working great with the pink guy. Like, this is a little bit of a messy process, I'm going to say. I may need to go back and watch the video again and see what I'm doing wrong. Next, we are going to make a little Easter basket to hold our eggs and go in the scene with our bunnies. And I die cut two circles out of craft cardstock and cut a bunch of strips that are about an eighth of an inch thick to create our basket. Um, and I don't recall off the top of my head what die set this is, but they're a little bit less than an inch in diameter. And I'm just going to start by pretty much creating a basket. So I'm going to take strips and bend them up and then glue them to the underside of the first circle. I'm going to start with four of those. I'm just tucking it under a little bit and then bending it up to get the little tab that gets glued on the underside. I really probably should have trimmed these down before I started doing this. It might have made life a little bit easier. And I had uh, done a test run with some scraps and I had done it at about with a one inch circle and the pieces an inch high and I decided it was too big so this is a little bit less than an inch and we're gonna go a little bit more than a half an inch high just to make it a little bit better sized so I'm gonna go ahead and trim these guys down
I'm just making a second mark so I can go ahead and trim down because we're going to put four more cross pieces before we start weaving. I figure might as well do that all at once. And then for these, instead of tucking under and bending up, I'm going to measure this way. I get them all the same length as the other ones. Now the second circle is pretty much just to give the bottom a nice finished look. Not that you're really going to see the bottom, but also to kind of add some additional support to holding these pieces on. Now we're just going to weave the papers in and out to create a basket. I'm going to start the first one part way across the piece so that when I get all the way around, there's space to meet up and that's not wanting to stick right now. So let's do this. You know what? This is what I forgot to do. So before I start weaving, I'm going to take the strip and run it along the edge of the table to give it a little curve so it bends a little bit better. And I'm going to do it to both sides so that it's got a little bit, it's a little bit bendier and will work better for doing this. All right, let's try that again. Add some glue to that guy. A little bit here, and it should work better this time around. Just gonna hold it for a sec to let the glue grab, and thankfully. Our glitter glue dries clear because I'm making a mess on this one. And then pretty much I'm going to just do a basket weave, which is in and out. So first one's on the outside, then it's on the inside, outside. This will go on the inside and get glued inside. Outside, inside, for some reason, this one is being far more fiddly <laughs> than the sample one I did. Because, you know, I'm on camera. Outside. Inside. Just 
just so you can not see anything right there. Um, just holding it in place till the glue grabs. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to snip it off and attach it. Hold that in place till it grabs. Just trying to see if the strip I have left will be long enough to go all the way around again. It looks like it will. All right. So the next one we're going to start on the inside. Sorry, the battery on my phone died and I don't know where we left off but we're just attaching the next strip right above the first one and weaving it in and out And I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of the strips till I get to the top. I'm doing it the same way, just weaving in and out to create the basket look. So I finished doing the basket weave of the papers to create a little basket. And I grabbed a little half of a styrofoam ball out of my stash to fill it in because you don't want to waste that empty space no one's going to see. And I'm going to add to it just another strip to make a handle. I think that'll be good enough length. Just kind of eyeballing that. I'm going to cut that off and reattach the side that undid itself. that side so there we have our little basket now for the base of the dome I grabbed a piece of styrofoam from my stash that had already been trimmed down some and just trimmed it so it will fit on the base like this and I'm going to cover it with Uh, some Spanish moss. So this is super moss, super moss preserved Spanish moss. And I believe I picked it up on Amazon and I'm just gonna basically glue it down to cover the styrofoam so that you don't see the less than attractive styrofoam. I think I'm gonna try using Fabri-Tac to glue this down and see how that goes. Mostly because I don't feel like getting out my hot glue gun. I'm just going to smooth that around. Let's see if that'll work to get. Ooh, that seems to be working pretty good. I'm just going to go around the sides first. And I don't know I, what I had used the other half of this for, but I cut it somewhat unevenly. So there's going to be a little bit of a rise, which I'm okay with because that'll add some more dimension. So we're just going to keep going around. So now you can do whatever you want to cover your base, use whatever you have. I just have a stash of Spanish moss because of various mixed media projects that I have done 
where I've used Spanish moss for it. All right, now I'm gonna leave that to dry. And once it's dry, we can add all of our little bits and pieces on top. All right, our bunnies are done. I've added moss to the styrofoam. And we've got our little Easter basket. I'm gonna add to the Easter basket some Easter basket grass. I've had this in my stash, I don't know, for ages. Picked it up probably for some kind of Easter related project at some point in the past. But I'm gonna get a clump of the grass and add it to the basket. And I'm gonna use a little art glitter glue. We'll try art glitter glue, see if that works, to attach it. Just enough to get it to stay in the basket. Hold on, my dog is getting into something. I will be right back in a moment. Okay, so the grass does not seem to want to stick to the art glitter glue. Not working so great. All right, I think I'm gonna grab some fabric pack this time and see how that works. I'm just gonna hold it there for a sec. That seems to have worked. So we now have Easter grass in the basket for our glittery eggs. What I ended up doing is instead of trying to coat the whole egg in glue and dumping it in the thing of glitter, I put a little bit of glue on, covered a section, put a little more, covered a section. I think really if you're going to try and coat it by dumping it into the glitter, you need to make more glitter than I did. But since I don't use a ton of glitter, I didn't want to make a ton of glitter. So we're going to just fill our Easter basket with our Easter eggs. And I'm gonna glue them in because otherwise I don't think they're gonna stay put. And of course my dog is now whining that he wants to go out. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna do one of each color. And of course, one dog went out and the other decided to stay in. And now that one wants out. I have a page from one of those you know, daily calendars that had dogs on it and it has a quote that says a door is something a dog is always on the wrong side of and if you've ever had a dog who goes out in the yard you will fully understand that is so true so and we're just gonna glue our little eggs into our little easter basket guys are not wanting to stick. All right, let me hold them in place for a second, see if they'll stay. Helps if you don't glue them to your finger. Go. So now we've got a lovely little Easter basket full of Easter eggs. We got some spare eggs to sprinkle around on the ground. And then the fun thing is going to be me figuring out where on earth I'm going to put this in my house because I have no idea where it's going. It's one of those things I was like, ooh, I want to play with the bunnies. Ooh, this egg shaped dome will be really cool to put a scene in without really thinking, oh, where are you going to put these Easter decorations? And I don't really tend to decorate all that much for Easter. It's usually just 
me, my dad, and my sister these days. <clears throat> so here's how it's looking. I just love those bunnies. Okay, I'm gonna add, I think I wanna add one more egg to the center of the basket. And then I may just toss them in the grass and not bother like gluing them down. It's just about done. I think what I want to do is grab a few paper flowers and sprinkle them around as well to add just a little bit more color to that big mass of green moss at the bottom. So I've got this stash of paper flowers and I'm gonna use these guys. I've got green, blue, orange, pink and purple. I think they're a good size for this project, like the smaller size ones. A few of those tossed around. It's just what this piece needs. And of course, I'm gonna stick something in the center of the flowers. Let me just dig out a bunch of flowers. I bought these at Michael's forever ago and I don't care how many I've used over the years it still looks like I haven't used any and I've actually like given away some because there's these huge jars full of flowers and got like a lifetime supply all right let's stick one of these like on the side of the Easter basket this will hold with our glitter glue. And I think what I'm gonna do is just stick pearls in the center of them. Um, there, let's do it on this side. So it's just a little finishing off detail. I think things, let's get that thing. I like it better. Angle it a little bit so that the things towards the front. All right, so I'm just gonna grab some adhesive back pearls and I will probably use glue too to ensure everything stays. And my quick stick, because it's so much easier to use that to pick up pearls. And we're just gonna add pearls to our flowers and I don't even think I'm gonna glue the flowers down. I think I'm just gonna toss them on there. Let them live where they will. Yeah, just finish them off with little pearls toss them about for that and I think we're gonna switch the yellow and the purple egg since the yellow and the green are very similar to each other so I'm just gonna go ahead and add pearls to all of my flowers Now that I've put pearls in the center of all the flowers, we're just gonna toss a few. Oh, I forgot to put one on the flower on the handle of the basket. So we'll do that after we place these guys. And I think I'm also gonna grab some scissors and trim some moss. That might be getting a little too woolly. So let's toss some flowers about. Add a pearl to the center of that flower. Pop our basket back on. Try and get the white bunny to stand up straight. He's acting a little drunk there. <laughs> get the le leaning white bunny. And now the basket's, everybody's leaning. The leaning dome of bunnies. I'm 
going to change our angle a little so that you can see me putting the dome on. Yeah, that was definitely a tight fit with the grasses and it's not actually on up there we go so there is our dome of bunnies all finished so here is our finished easter dome and we're going to take a quick 360 look at our dome. And I ended up, after finishing filming the video, uh, kind of cutting apart the bottom to shave some more off the uh, styrofoam so that the dome would fit better over top of uh, the styrofoam because it was a little bit too big. But there's our furry fuzzy bunnies and our glittered eggs inside the egg-shaped dome so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you want to be certain not to miss future videos be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell thanks for joining me and happy crafting